Hey everyone, we are live. I am Laszlo. Hello everyone. Yeah, so today, now, so let's start from a little bit uh, from a distance. So I've been live streaming Monday evenings. Uh, this has been my personal exploration space. Uh, together with my friends, we explored uh, various tools like Dagger.io or the System Initiative Project, or I also liked uh, explored uh, Hatzner Kubernetes installer tool. So, so cloud native things in general. And uh, this time around, I'm going to be coding uh, live. Uh, not because I'm I'm such an expert, but uh, I can handle myself. And uh, I uh, trust you guys that if you find something that I could do better, you will call me out and uh, yeah, just give me some pointers how to do logging better or, or whatever. And uh, this time around is going to be about something new. Uh, so over the weekend, I had an idea that uh, that this this could be fun, and actually this could be very useful. Uh, if you see my screen, uh, it's a new project called Capacitor, uh, and it will be a UI for Flux. You know, Flux is a GitOps controller uh, in the cloud native space. We put YAMLs or Kubernetes descriptors. Uh, into Git repositories and then Flux installs it on the cluster. And uh, I want to, to, to make a general purpose UI for, UI for it. Uh, mainly because um, I keep running into discussions where people choose Argo CD over Flux and I don't fully get, uh, except, you know, the UI component of Argo is uh, definitely uh, something that uh, you know, uh, settles discussions because, you know, more people can look at it and it's more approachable. It visualizes the, the, the GitOps sync state and, and also the deployments that have been deployed with Argo CD. And um, I believe this is uh, pretty much uh, a standard tool now. So Argo CD's UI, uh, typically deployed in a read-only fashion, is the Kubernetes uh, dashboard of the day. And it has, you know, like features like you can look at logs and you can explore various resources in a in a tree. Although I have some opinions about that tree, like uh, it displays everything like a replica set and uh, and an endpoint of the service and so on. So maybe too much information. So that's definitely uh, some opinion I have on that one. Uh, but to just keep uh, or like focus on the, on the main thing here. Flux doesn't have a UI or did not have a UI for a very long. And I think uh, this uh, uh, this was definitely uh, something that uh, needed to be addressed. And I'm aware that there is a Flux UI these days. So the, the, the makers of Flux, I think Vworks uh, came out with a, with a, um, a UI-based tool. I think if this is, is free and open source, so you could use it. And it's somehow part of their also part of their uh, enterprise offering, the Weave GitOps platform, uh, which is cool and all. Um, I have just very brief knowledge about it. I know that you can look at all the Flux CRDs, like custom resources. Uh, we did like a Git repository and the customization and the Helm release and basically all the all those custom resources that uh, Flux provides. Uh, you can look through uh, with this tool. However, I think the, the philosophy of, of, of this new project that I'm, I'm launching now is uh, I, I want to be a little bit more than that. So it's great that you can uh, browse various Kubernetes resources. That's cool. <clears throat> However, I'd like to compile this information in a more contextualized way. So ideally, if you're a developer, you should see everything at, you know, on one screen. Like this is my deployment. This was deployed by this customization and it was last synchronized, I don't know, 15 minutes ago. And if there was an error of that, uh, of that sync, uh, the error should be very visible and transparent. Like I, I, sh I should know what's going on at, at every point uh, while I'm you know, operating my application. So that's actually on the roadmap as well. So today I'm gonna be coding um usually my streams uh, last for like two hours maybe we go over uh, this time so if you want to have uh, dinner and or if you want to walk your dog 
go for it and when you come back i will be here most likely this is my personal and sacred time nobody's going to disturb me so i can code so that's cool and today i'm just going to you know bootstrap a golang uh, project um i will be most likely just write one big main go file and i will connect to a kubernetes cluster with the client go uh, package and i will i will query some of the resources flux have so if i'm able to get a git repository it and its state and the customization and its state uh, that would be a good uh, end result of this but uh, let's see how fast i can get there and then see if we can uh, move a little bit forward so today there will be no ui coding uh, I would have to uh, prepare for that a little, maybe with some screen mockups and so on, even though I have some ideas like how it will look. Uh, I will just start with uh, casual coding today. Um, as for more features in the roadmap, I definitely want to you know, include the, the most common things on the uh, on, on this uh, UI is that, you know, how, how to look at container logs if a pod has multiple containers we should see all the containers and the init containers if there were some and you know all these things like this is a very complex feature even though like you know getting logs with kubectl logs should be easy uh, there are many different cases that uh, that a you know, good ui should address and of course other things like events and how you know uh, when you describe a kubernetes uh, a deployment you can often catch uh, common errors like if it was restarted by the out of memory killer and so on there is good information in there and you know if you're a developer sometimes you just want to access your app so a port forward command if you can like copy that from the ui that that would be a pretty cool feature and of course displaying errors and uh, later on so um you probably don't know me um i'm i'm found I, I founded a company called gimlet.io where we have a flux based de developer platform so that is very opinionated you know we take care of the uh, bootstrapping of 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 the of, of, of the GitOps setup uh also uh, how, like it gives a workflow for you to deploy your application and because we are doing the whole thing from start till the end and it's uh, there are some opinions and assumptions we can build on there are many different features we can do now in in capacitor uh, this is going to be a, a generally applicable project meaning i will only include features that work for every flux installation so no more no opinions no assumptions uh, nothing so i was actually thinking like uh, what features kind of i can kind of replicate in a general uh, generic way and it doesn't require too much integration with other tools and so on so for example if we if we are displaying errors we could easily send notifications as well to some uh, uh, Slack or Discord channel. So that, that's not a heavy integration. So lightweight things like that could uh, could be part of this project. And uh, at some point, uh, I'm going, going to support environments as well, like your staging capacitor agent will connect to this, this centralized view of all clusters. But that's really not in scope for the, for the first many, many iterations, because I just want to get right, uh, you know, the basic uh, uh information architecture and like the ux of the project and you know we can go into various different territories like uh service catalogs have uh, uh, some good meta information about deployment services like uh, external links and so on so so those can be part as well but right now uh, i just want to achieve something which uh, gives good information for developers about the flux uh GitOps synchronization state, like is everything green? That's uh, that's case one. And then there are some uh, error cases, obviously. And then there is the, the in-between states like, uh, yeah, we are applying and it's been running for two minutes and it's slow. And then what happens then kind of situations. And if you could nail the, uh, the generic Kubernetes dashboard uh, um, questions, that would be amazing because at that point, uh, Flux uh, may get a UI that is comparable with Argo CD and that sort of, you know, changes the discussion out there. At least that is my hope for the project. Uh, 
Uh, if you visit it uh, on, on GitHub, please give me a star, give this project a star, because that's sort of the only thing that I have <laughs> as, as feedback right now, even though there was some social chatter here, here and there. Please give a, give the project a star because that's a, that shows momentum and you know the kind of uh, um, validation of the idea itself. Um, I was babbling for a while, uh, and I just want to come back to comments because there are some people joined in, like Yusef, my good colleague. Thank you very much for being here. You are awesome. Thank you, Yusef. And uh, there is someone else. Uh, who has a question about uh, a recent project. Uh, sure. I'm happy to answer any questions, basically, if that's, uh, if that's uh, you know, generally applicable. So thanks for joining. And um, so this is the project. Uh, all it has is a readme file, which basically contains the things that I already said. And it has a license, which is Apache 2. Uh, I don't intend to, I don't know, to lawyer too, too much on this. Apache 2 could be the go-to license for many new projects. So, so that's what it is. And I'm going to start initializing a Go package, unless someone has a question or, of some sort. Nothing major. So, yeah, it's coding time. All right, so I have this in my local. Oh, and in StreamYard, I can add some music. So there is a long, long question. Hmm, no cookie found. And it works on Android, so so that's uh that's actually interesting because that's that's not just your local in environment, it works out there in the world. Maybe iPhones have a stricter cookie policy. So when you save your, your uh, cookie and the information, you provide the host name, and maybe there are some other flags as well and maybe you are missing something. Um, iPhones and, and, and Mac in general at least has a, have a good marketing about uh, being more security conscious than other platforms. So I can see that maybe it's a cookie setting then why it doesn't work. Maybe try it on a, on a Mac and, and see if it happens on, on, uh, on Safari or something. Or, or try other browsers on the iPhone, and maybe you can narrow it down to some some specific um, cookie parameter or, or something. Yeah, that's just just what I have in mind. But uh, yeah, maybe others have ideas. All right, and back to the project. And uh, yeah, so so I have this uh, this platform called Gimlet, and Capacitor is definitely a subset in terms of features. Gimlet is opinionated and Capacitor will be generally applicable. Uh, I will probably borrow some code from Gimlet just because I don't want to keep you waiting and uh, uh, don't want you to see me Googling all the time. And definitely ideas, but I hope over time I will learn new things, like how to do things better. So, so this general purpose Flux UI could definitely uh, be uh, driving later on Gimlet as well, but my thinking for, for sure. And I'm, I'm, hope to, I'm hoping to interact with many of you uh, out there who run Flux and uh, have, very, have some specific ideas about how should be, uh, how the UI should be uh, structured or, or what features should be included. So uh, that's that. That was just the, the basics. And uh, let, let's do some coding. So there is nothing Go inside in this project. And um, um, I might be wrong, but uh, still the, the practice still is that there is a CMD folder in uh, Go projects. And then probably there is another uh, folder uh, inside like capacitor. Um, and then here there is main Go, but uh, yeah, let's adjust this package main and then uh, 
yeah, let's steal a like a go rank. Mm. Yes. Yeah, I should do go mod in it. And how to do this? It should be um, github.com slash gimlet io slash capacitor. Okay, go mod tidy. And what happens now? I have a Go module file and I have Go 120. This trip could be also a good idea that I validate like the practices I do. So for example, I don't know if Go 120 is the version I should be using at at like you know at this time. But uh yeah, leave a comment if uh, if I should upgrade my Go or something. Mm, and I have this and I guess I would need need a make file to compile things and also to run uh, this. Yeah, sorry, people, this is going to be slow in the beginning until we have a structure. But hello world was printed, so I guess at least I have something working in VS Code. I should also find a way to. <clears throat> Yeah, that is odd. Sorry, yeah, may maybe. Yeah, I'm still fixated on the on the cookie idea that the cookie settings are not perfect for for iPhone, but no idea. Sorry, maybe others have. Uh, Have more ideas but okay so i have a hello world here and basically i should connect to some kubernetes cluster And then I should be look at Git repositories and customizations. Yeah, Flux uh, resources. I should be printing them. So that is sort of what I want to do uh, right now. But I need a test environment. Mm, I will go with like end-to-end -end testing uh, for now because I am. Um, I'd like to see. Uh, like what things I need to actually do the task before I would be able to unit test parts of it or, or the full thing. So so pardon me for going end to end. Uh, K3D uh, cluster create, and this could be capacitor cluster. K3D is great. I almost have a cluster up and running. All right. No pods yet, but they are being provisioned. In the meantime, yeah, so I should have another screen uh, with, with the comments running so I don't have to navigate back all the time. Uh, but all good. Nobody's complaining that something is not visible or anything. So I have a cluster. So this is great. I have a cluster and I want to have Flux on it. Uh, now I use Gimlet, I bootstrap with Gimlet and so on. But in this project, I want to use Flux, uh, the, the, the standard way of working. So I probably have a Flux CLI, but that is uh, very old. I don't even have it or don't have it on my path. So let's go flux CD. IO and oh, 
to get started. Install Flux. No, I don't have Brew. Let's go here. Bash. Curl Bash sudo. Classic. Let's do that. Mm -hmm. Good. I have flux and the many options and commands. Good. And let's see like the classic or the stock bootstrapping. Mm. I know why they are doing it, but I don't I kind of don't like it. I, I don't want to expose tokens and users and stuff, but uh, I will do it anyways. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, so this is my user and uh, it needs a GitHub personal access token. So I will just unshare my screen for the time being until I get that. Settings. Actually, there is this fine grained access token from GitHub. Maybe I should use that. Token name, capacitor, deploy. I put, put my screen back in the meantime. So, token name will be capacitor deploy, expiration should be very low, public, only selected, and account permissions. Now, what does Flux tell me? Not too much. I think it, it, it wants to create uh, repositories, so um, only selected repositories, action, administration, yeah, I think it needs this one. And account permissions, probably nothing. Yeah, nothing like that. All right, let's try with the least amount of permissions. And it is, what's wrong with this? Why cannot I, why can't I click? Because I need to add at least one repository. Damn. I have the Express.js test application. Mm -hmm. So let me unshare my screen and generate the token. I have it. I'm going to export mm -hmm. So I have exported the token and uh, let Let's continue. Install Flux onto your cluster. What's in here? Bootstrap GitHub, GitHub username, repository, mm. capacitor, infra, branch main. And it's a personal account. Let's do it. Okay, I have a token problem. What if I edit this per 
personal access token and grant access to this repo. Mm. Okay, and I add mm, the name was capacitor infra. All right, let's update it. How about now? This is odd. So I have read, yeah, probably I need uh, access to code as well. Now, can I change that? Yes. All right, I like this fine grained thing. So code, 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 contents, yes. Read and write, update. This is lovely, once again. Yes. All good. So I want to do this pre check again. Yeah, still good. I have pods in the flux namespace. Everything is running. I have Git repositories. Good stuff. I have customizations. Good. So I have flux. And uh, what is inside this uh, repository? Project capacitor. No. Where I, I think it cloned it, but it is it really cloned? Cloning branch, cloned, generating generating <clears throat> Yeah, maybe it uh, it actually deleted the project, so that could be good. So if I do git clone and come back to Last of CPH slash capacitor infra. And if I clone this, all right. Inside here, there is the K3S cluster. I think I, I, I should have named it K3D, whatever. So there is a GitOps toolkit components, which is a namespace, a network policy, and what else? Network policy, network policy, resource quota, cluster role, cluster role, cluster role, role binding, yeah, CRDs and all the jazz. GitOps, GitOps toolkit sync. This is the Git repository, which links my cluster to this Git repo, updates every minute. And the customization looks at this path and yeah, basically applies everything from that folder. And this customization YAML is just um, a list of the previous two files. Actually, I don't think this is required per se. Uh, because Flux generates it, and I actually don't do this. I just start putting YAML files into a folder, but it's probably better practice to, to have this customization. But then I have two customization, one that is applying, and the other one is, yeah, which is a different kind, customize config gates. Yeah, so same kind, different API version that's uh 
I still think that this is a bad naming choice, but uh, yeah, whatever. All right, anything? Cold runner extension. Cold runner extension. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I kind of have this with Go. So if I do run and, and debug and it just works. So maybe it's good if I have multiple uh, or different languages I use. Maybe you can clarify yourself. But I have these things and they are the cluster. So next step will be or should be that we connect to the cluster from Go, which is quite an endeavor. <laughs> I uh, probably have to resort to the Gimlet code base. Uh, but before I do that, maybe there is a good canonical tutorial how to add client go to your uh, code base. So client go tutorial, getting started with the Kubernetes go client, uh, medium article from this January. Okay, this is probably newer than my, uh, my current practice. So What should I use? Yeah, go Molinit, go get client, go latest. Yeah, sure, I can do that. And what's going on? <laughs> no thanks. Is it really like that? I cannot read. I don't want to upgrade. Like, what does it cost? Yeah, we are not. Yeah. So I could do this definitely, and I might. Let me look at different uh, options. Client, uh, yeah, this is package.dev. Yeah, or really. And from 2018, and nothing from the Kubernetes website. So this is still this still remains arcane knowledge how to use client go. Ah. Create update delete deployment, create update delete deployment, fake client in cluster, out of cluster. Yeah. So this is, uh, mm -hmm. this is not bad. I do create update delete, get nodes. Yeah. What, what, wait, it is not client go. Ah, wait, I'm mildly stupid there's a mango file mm -hmm. all right i can use this and maybe compare with uh kim let's ap approach which is probably outdated so uh yeah let's install client go or out of cluster client configuration.
I don't want to use my home dears cube config. That that is just too dangerous. So I'm going to use cube config from uh, from basically this. This is an environment variable. Export cube config. Blah blah blah. So I'm going to do that. Okay. And then what to do with cube config? Build from flags. Fun with flags. Client CMD. Mm -hmm. And if I do uh, debug configuration, new folder folder dot vs code, and I think I will copy this from Gimlet because I'm lazy. So if I do a launch JSON file, or no, maybe I can. Uh, Launch hmm. configuration hmm. add configuration. All right. Yeah, so it's basically what I did. The version is the same as before. Launch package instead, I will do capacitor mode. Yeah, and then I will add environment variables. Yeah, I could do a, a dot end file. That, that's handy. All right, let's do an env file here. All right, and then cube config equals um, I should get it from K3D, like how to get K3D export cube config because it puts into my uh, regular cube config and I want to I want to put it into a file print cube config from clusters so if I do get help mm -hmm. Write it into a file. Hmm. Yeah, this is a cube config, so I could use this. And this should be config.yaml. Does it work? Does it not? Let's see. I still have to get client go. This is the time when uh, we start downloading and go for a coffee. <laughs> it's it's huge and now oh, come on. <laughs> it was too fast. Way faster than I thought. And uh, here config is not used anywhere. So Let's uh, create a client set, <clears throat> which is basically the client interface. And then I could do, yeah, basically get all the pods. Yeah, let's do that. Just for fun, list all the pods in the cluster. And this is an endless loop because of, I don't know, this is, 
no endless loop, please. Good. So if I run this, and if it actually works, meta v1 is not imported yet. API machinery. Okie dokie. And if I go run and debug, play capacitor, go mod tidy. All right, still manageable. Let's do a breakpoint there. I'd actually panicked before that. Mm, maybe cube config is actually cube underscore config. Hmm. Uh, no, this is uh, like that. So, so this is a flag, okay? So previously the, the libraries I used was actually was able to, you know, interchangeably use an environment variable and a command line argument, but this expects to have a command line argument. Fair enough, I can definitely satisfy that. So let me actually go back to the GIMLET code base because um, uh, here, again, in the launch configuration, there is a place where I can provide args and the args array. Args, and then I provide dash dash cube config, and the parameter will be So if I run it again, the other or in VS code, what's wrong? Mm -hmm. kubeconfigml, no such file or directory. Most likely we are in the wrong folder. So let's go back here. Steal the name for good. Mm -hmm. mm. I think I could do this workspace folder slash. Can I do that? Let's try. Again, wrong file. Good. So I connected, apparently. I query the pods. There is no error. And the pods array contains items of, you know, like 10 at least, where the object meta has a name local path provisioner in namespace cube system. This looks good. So let me print out everything. There are 11 plots, pods in the cluster. Thank you. I could also like list those. Pod range pods and then Dot. Maybe it's the other way around. Um, it's been a while. Pod dot. I think. 
pod list. So pods get list or list. List meta. Yeah, this um, structure in Kubernetes is not always uh, obvious. So pods have items. Items, which is an array of pods, finally. And then this is probably fine as is. Pod dot object meta dot name. Good stuff. Let's just print it. Okie dokie, no new line whatsoever. <laughs> so let's be better here. <clears throat> Good. So I have the controllers. And yeah, so I connected to Kubernetes and I printed the pods. This is a little checkpoint. So far, so good. Uh, so as you can see, there's a long way for uh, <laughs> until we reach uh, a flux UI, but I think in like, I don't know, 10, 15 hours, we can reach uh, the first, first release. All right, so I have pods and <clears throat> in this API, I could get config maps, nodes, namespaces, deployments, probably not deployments, because that's that's not core v1. So if I would type deployment, that's not there. So that's the stupid API version thing in in uh, Kubernetes. So probably I, I should do like apps v1, and then I would do, be able to do deployments because deployments are in the apps slash v1 API group, or I have no idea how these are called. So Kubernetes. Deployment apps slash v1. So it's a different API group again. There is apps v1, there is core v1, and networking even for ingress. Yeah, anyway, so they made it super complicated, but uh, I guess it makes sense if you are Kubernetes, you have to be complicated. I have pods. Now the bad part is that custom resources are not part of the standard API because, hey, they are custom. So here comes the bad part. I uh, I need to read these uh, somewhat differently, which um, I could search in Google. I'm, I know for a fact that Gimlet has it. Um, I also know it's 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 not the best code because it's it's a custom resource and it's untyped for the most part. So that's uh, probably just our fault. So either I could uh, search on Google, like how to get custom resources from the Kubernetes API. That is one way to do. Uh, I could copy Gimlet, that's another one. And I could definitely look at the Flux code base because I'm frustrated that uh, custom resources I queried from the Kubernetes API so far have been uh, untyped. So it was very cumbersome to work with them. So the next checkpoint uh, will be getting Flux custom resources. And they should be typed as hell. Otherwise, it's uh, annoying. So um, client go get custom resource. Yeah, I read this article apparently in the past. Define types. Yeah, probably I should uh, import something from Flux. Deep copy methods, no thanks. No, 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 no. 
So I could do like a group version of my own and then, no, nah, this is stupid. Is this really the best way to do it? No, let's go straight to Gimlet's code base because I know this is a pain to actually query this. So in uh, package, agent, git repository controller, I could uh, get git repositories from, yeah, so what is this? Git repositories, a dynamic client and that gets resources and the resource is a git repository resource which is defined by group version and resource okay and then i list it then this this is the ugliness as git repository yeah I, I use maps and yeah, it's basically untyped. So I'm, I'm using a map uh, string interface kind of approach, like getting fields and undefined something, some things. So maybe I start browsing the Flux code base to, to see like how they do it. It's their CRD. Um, I'm pretty sure they query it themselves. I hope it will not be too abstract to actually make sense of it. Yeah, that's only the has been project. Flux 2. This is the uh, umbrella project. And maybe it's the, uh, it's the Git, uh, it's the Git repository controller, source controller it's called. Yeah, I just need to take a short break. All right, I'm back. Where was I? Git repository with Flux. So source controller API v1. Source.go. So this is the thing I could uh, parse into. Maybe not. Group version doc artifact types. Oh yeah, because source controller obviously supports not just a Git repository, but OCI repository and probably 10 others. So 
Flux is great, honestly. This is the super great backend project, very well structured and supports all the things. I just have to get through the uh, abstraction because the source has an artifact, which could be, I guess, many different things. So bucket type, artifact types go. Let's go there. This is the output. Aha, uh -huh, so the artifact is the output of, 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 a, of a new version of Git path URL revision digest last updated. Mm -hmm. And I recall these conditions actually kind of like states of, uh, of the uh, flux uh, resource so basically these are the different states a source can have outdated verified failed blah 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 and some others all right this is a good reference for later use uh-huh this is git's repository spec Um, yeah, so with Flux, and if, if we want to be general purpose, we have to support all the things. I will probably try to be as generic as possible, but maybe I will start for, with Git repository and maybe then OCI repository, and then uh, expand the, the supported list of things and then uh, working on the abstraction. All right, what else is in here? Where is, for example, OCI repository? Maybe it's in beta. Oh, yes. Helm chart types. And this was V1. I don't care about uh, beta 1. I care about beta 2. Helm chart, OCI repository. All right, everything is here. I don't know how I will parse it, but uh, I hope I will find some example code here. So TLDR, I could do it ugly. Uh, in Gimlet, we do it ugly. We get the resource with this dynamic client thing, and then comes out a big blob blah, 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 and then we parse it as a map string interface. I don't want to parse it as a map string interface. I want to do it right. So that's why it is taking time. And uh, where, was, where was I? Source controller. All right, so tests, maybe? Fuzz. Fuzzing. Internal, now that, that's interesting. <laughs> Everything internal is interesting. Controller. This is cool, temporary Git server for tests. And then it needs a Git repo, pretty cool. Creates a Git repository, creates it. Hmm.
maybe I will um, uh, just get the unstructured thing and then think of the parsing a little later. So how did I get the unstructured go things? Where was I? Mm, here, going backwards. Uh -huh. Dynamic controller. Mm. I actually, there was this cube env. which got a dynamic client and it was created on start. Yeah, dynamic client is basically just this. Instead of we create instead of creating a client set, we create a dynamic uh, client from the package that is called Dynamic, yes, client go slash dynamic. Dynamic means custom resources. And I have a config called cube config. Or just config. Okay, and I have a dy dynamic client, good for me. And I can later query the dynamic client. Something like this. Dynamic client. And then getting the resource, which has this uh, wonderful definition. Nice, not really. In all the namespaces, and then getting some list options from Meta V1, I suppose. Yep. And if error, that just it's just panic. Goody. And this gets the Git repositories, uh, but I don't know how to parse them correctly. So let's print all the things, which is Git repositories items. This is a repo and then when I want to do this this will have very little things maybe I should just uh, catch it with a breakpoint all right a repo has an object which is a map string interface lovely and go away call stack why you are not going away like this Good stuff. All right, <clears throat> so kind. Okay, I could do a switch based on the kind. No, but this is already something parsed. I don't want the map string interface. unstructured content. This was what was going on in, uh, in the Flux code base, some magic with structured and unstructured. So maybe I should search for something here
Mm -hmm. So this is it. <clears throat> First, we define a source v1 git repository type, and then it has an R, which is, uh, is a reconciler and gets it from. Uh huh. So they have some abstraction to parse this. Maybe I can do something similar. So maybe I make a bookmark here. Uh -huh. So what does this do? It's probably the most generic code I've ever seen. Internal cache, cache go. <clears throat> no, this is not it. I no, this is not key string, it's more like context, namespace, and ob yeah, object. Hello, Lajos. I am stuck. I'm trying to parse a Git repository the right way, not like uh, like the the Gimlet way, which is uh, <laughs> definitely not the right way, which is a map string interface. So I'd like to parse it into a proper type. So that's where I am, but. Uh, uh, either way, I think I'm going to end the stream at 7.30 and at 7.15, I'm going to switch to, you know, just uh, the hackish way just to get the Git repositories and customizations and print them. And then I will refactor the code um, outside of the stream. I'm uh, not too comfortable with the uh, long silences, but uh, maybe I will get comfortable with it. No idea. So, where was I? <clears throat> so, can I provide type information in this get? Type meta. What is type meta? It's a string, right? No. Ah, oh, oh, 
never mind that's kind of the api version so that's actually not about parsing what is the type that comes out of this Aha, uh -huh. meta v1 unstructured, unstructured. And yeah, and Git repositories have unstructured list type. So help me Google. Thank you from the Netherlands, Irving. Yes, yes, unstructured. Thank you. It took you some time, but you were super cool to share it with us. Unstructured converter interface. Okay, this is Java. I know this. <laughs> Runtime default unstructured converter factory. <laughs> Okie dokie. Thank you. This is probably it. So, um, get a resource, returns an unstructured object. Yeah, you got. Okay. Convert. So I get the unstructured content. Mm, so it's a git repository spawn unstructured content, wonderful. And that is unstructured. All right, I uh, define a type. <clears throat> No, actually, I'm going to do it inside the for loop. So one, once more, I'm in here. I have an unstructured repository and the type will be source v1 git repository. And yeah, let's use this other like this. Mm -hmm. I will call it git repository. And what is runtime? API machinery runtime. Amazing. Okay. Source v1 is not yet part of our code base. Source v1 is Flux CD source controller API v1. Okay, let's do a go get. Awesome. And from unstructured into Git repository. Panic. And then it's repository dot name. Oh my God. So that's why I like this so much. Uh, repo. So I can use this stream as a fun time. Plus I can refactor later on GitLab code base. Plus I have, have something new as well created. So this is pretty cool. I get to revisit the, sh the shaky parts. So it's called flux system. That's how it's called. It is called flux system. So I list, I printed the flux system. I, I printed the Git repository. So that's cool. And for some reason, it thinks that I'm using the beta one. That's not true. 
or am I using that? Maybe that is inside my code. I'm using V1 here. So where does it come from? Let's go step by step. It already did a warning, so let's do again. Already a warning. Ah, because here I am stupid. Let's do V1. Yeah, Gimlet code base needs an update. That's that is true. Good stuff. So first I printed pods. Nobody cares about pods, at least not, not right now. That's why we don't need the client set either. We are listing flux resources. Yep. And I can do customization in a very similar way. There will be no structure today, folks. I'm sorry about uh, this mess, but this is just one long main file. I'm going to get customizations. Here I'm going to get customization. The, let's do the. And the uh, group is actually different. It's called customized toolkit. Axidio V1 customizations. Let's iterate through them. Let's call it let's call it K. Let's get an unstructured content here. This is um, Uh, customize controller. So let me just fake that I know where it is. So let me customizations from V1 in customize controller. I suppose this is it. <gasps> get, please, quick fix. Go get. And here, <clears throat> I'm going to parse it into customization, customization v1 dot customization. And I could parse it into a list. Mm -hmm. Maybe I will parse it into a list, but let's put it in here and then print the name go. <laughs> I have flux system two times. This is success. Okay. Very limited success so far, but uh, we were able to connect to the Kubernetes API. We queried for custom resources of flux, and we were able to parse it with this wonderful Default unstructured converter from unstructured function, which is uh, great because otherwise it would have been a pain to navigate the map string interface uh, Golang types. Okie dokie. So what else do we want to do today? I could parse this list because the type of this one, I suppose it's a customization list. So I could parse it into a list. So you don't have to parse it a million times, just one time. That's a little thing I could do. I could also um, go abstract and maybe, maybe I should get the kind here in Git repository. So maybe here, I know the kind, so maybe I could do a switch and based on the, the, the kind, I could parse it into an OCI repository or a Git repository just to be future proof.
just a little bit. But maybe I will just leave this uh, up to future Laszlo. So repo here <coughs> is unstructured, unstructured. But if I uh, source list, can I parse it into a source list? Source list, no. What types there are? Artifact. Yeah, no. Must be supported by all API types. Mm -hmm. So, so I could program to the source interface. Mm. Yeah, let's uh, handle uh, generic support later. Good. So, what else do I need? I need a commit. I need to get ignore. First real commit. And so many dependencies. Now, how big this will be if I do, <clears throat> can I do go build here? No go files. Uh, go build github.com slash gimnet.io slash capacitor. This is strange. I'm in the, I'm in the module. Come tidy. Let's cheat. The old. Build, 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 build dashboard. Go build, and it uses the a path maybe cmd slash capacitor. This is strange. So how big is the file? 17 megabytes. Thank you, client go. <laughs> Not too bad. <clears throat> but maybe I should make a, a build file. So this was dist. Go build. Uh, it's the same here. What's wrong? Aha, uh -huh. better. Let's do a make file just for future's sake. Uh, 
and it works by tabs, I suppose. Yeah, that's a tab. And there's this phony thing to, to always run the build. And just cache things. So if I do make build success, I could do test. Go test and yeah, like this. Yeah, but uh, feel free to suggest better way to do these things because, uh, as you can see, I know some stuff, a uh, little from everything. But obviously, if you're a Go programmer, you know how to do these things better than I do. I, uh, I kind of program Go, React to marketing, sales, all kinds of stuff. It is fun, but uh, as you can see, I am not the best coder on earth. Mm -hmm. and let's uh, delete these files and put the build into a bin folder like I did here. <clears throat> yeah, build folder, it's also fine. Build capacitor. ignore build does it work mm -hmm. if I do build capacitor it says that I should provide a cube config which is cube config demo amazing and um, what else? I add the CI as well. I guess that's uh, that could be a nice end result from today. We have a make file. We're gonna have some CI, and uh, gonna see what is going to be the scope for next time. Okie dokie. How do I add an action here? <clears throat> go again I could copy things but uh, maybe I just uh, start from scratch and maybe I find better practices than before on main on pull request yes jobs Ubuntu latest checkout setup go 120 and instead of doing this, I will do make build. And for test, I will do make test. By the way, why don't I test first and then build later? Strange, but whatever. Okay, this is running. Okay. 
I should send a note to this guy. This is a great post. How do I send a message to him? Thank you, Erwin or Erwin. Did I send it? Mm -hmm. Send now. Good stuff. All right. So what's up with my CI? Green, amazing. So we have CI, we have make file, we have a main go file. <clears throat> all right, obviously, uh, next steps would be to query all the things, have releases, customizations, um, whatever other things, maybe even like uh, notification providers, and then find a good data model for this project. Uh, everything is going to be in memory. Uh, for the first many iterations. So uh, this will run in your cluster. You can install it with a Helm chart. It will query for for these resources. And actually I could, um, maybe I could uh, continue the stream with, uh, with actually subscribing to changes of these resources. Because if a Git repository goes from one state to the other, you want to get notified and uh, I still have some time. So I, I might go there just again, just as a proof of concept. So yeah, we need these updates getting streamed to us and it should go to the in-memory data structure. And soon enough, there should be a web folder in here. And once uh, our Go file starts up, it should start serving the web folder as well, the web folder assets. So there will be a front end very soon. Um, I've been doing a lot of uh, React. Uh, so that's probably going to be in React. Why right, there are four comments here? Yeah, that's something else. Yep. So um, I used to do React. So I'm probably going to do the front end in React just because that's a sort of uh, the most known thing for me and probably for everybody out there. And yeah, there will be a web folder. When the capacitor starts up, uh, it will be able to, you will be able to access it from a web UI. And all these little subscriptions to the Kubernetes API will be streamed down to the front end. So some plumbing to be done, but uh, yeah, so far so good. And um, Let's do this controller thing because I have something in Gimlet, but then again, it's uh, been a while since uh, I did or we did a resource search on this one. So if I go to package agent and uh, Git repository controller here, I have some abstraction going on, uh, but um, there's some controller code here. Uh, the Git repository controller is a dynamic controller, which is uh, yeah. So the Kubernetes API machinery is a huge beast. There are informers and queues and and whatnot, and there is of course a lot of uh, knowledge required to do this right to not miss a beat. Um, I don't say that I can I can write that bulletproof, but uh, I will start with something, and over time I will ask for advice from smarter people than I am, uh, and then we're gonna implement these action or event handlers 
when a new resource is created, it adds an event to a queue and when it's updated, it goes to a queue and so on. And there is a queue uh, worker basically, which processes these, uh, these items. I think I'm just gonna copy this code. So in the next 20 minutes, we will have uh, a streaming uh, setup of this uh, Git repository and um, customization resource getter. So maybe I will <clears throat> start with good old staging. New dynamic controller. And I promise for next time, this will be uh, more solid and I'm gonna read about it. So here, new go file. Yeah. Actually, I can do like a package folder now. Package controllers. So it needs an indexer, a rate limiting interface, uh, cache controller. I think there are books about it, like full length books. Okay. And what happens with the dynamic client here? Nothing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I'm not quite sure what happens after we put items in the queue. So this is the controller, which is probably then started. So if I call new dynamic controller, what happens? Who calls this? Yeah, in the Git repository controller. Yeah, okay, so the function is actually an 
anonymous function. So we pass it in. So when we create the controller, we create the behavior as well. That's cool. So how about uh, I start using this? Once we queried all the things, I'm going to do a new dynamic controller. And from controllers, actually. New dynamic controller, which requires a whole lot. Controllers. Yes, this is cool. Quick fix, go get. Yeah, whatever. Uh, maybe I have to push first, but this is all things that is that are required. Thank you, Yusef. This is the resource, which is uh, this thing. No, actually, no. Yeah, this is just, uh, yeah, the whole thing, okay. But don't worry, we will be done in 10 minutes. This is actually not too difficult if you have done this before and you're copying the code. Okay, and for all cases, we should uh, just print something. We should print out, you know, what happened here. <clears throat> we have an object meta, so we could object meta dot uh, problems with the imports. See what's going on here. Mm, this is actually something else. Ah, uh, yeah, because this is small e. Mm. This 
was not meant to be used outside of the package. So uh, let's cheat for now. We will restructure soon enough. All right, so this compiles, then I will get an object meta dot name. And maybe I will get some other things as well. Object meta, st some status, some sort of status. You know what? I will just debug it and see what's being caught here. And what's wrong here? I'm doing, doing something stupid. Ah, uh, string pointer. Why string pointer? Nobody said string pointer. All right, no idea if this works. Uh, we haven't started the controller, so it will not. So this returns a controller and no error. Fair enough. I'm missing a bunch of code. Maybe I could use this from Gimlet completely. Yeah. If I import it, then I don't have to. <clears throat> hmm. Maybe I will just copy and paste. But this has been some Kubernetes sample code at some point. How to do proper logging in Go? Is it still using some external package or, or doing more canonical things? What is this? Process next item. Yeah, this is some super smart code that, uh, again, somebody wrote books about. What is this used for? Get object meta. Yeah, it's probably not used for anything. Yeah, this is sent to the to the actual event handler. So I have to do some cleverness here. Actually. Case.
Maybe there is a better way to do this. Op OP is an interface and we are doing a type check on it. And then we are getting object meta for in all cases. So that is quite stupid code. How about when, what is type? This is a type-based switch. Hmm. But isn't there an interface I can convert this to? Again, Kubernetes programming. I will try to see what, uh, what's in here on a debug session and see if I can solve this better. So I have controller, I have controller and CTRL run stop channel and threadiness one, I suppose. Mm. These are started up in the agent of Gimlet. Yeah, just one channel, uh, one thread, and there is a stop channel, which is helping me later on. So I can do this. I am adding in a stop channel, and then I do this on a go routine. And what happens with the stop channel? We are waiting for signals. Mm, on sig int and sig term, so I can actually exit from this application. Okay, and then the stop channel, yeah. Okay, I know why the stop channel is required. Let's do all of this. So. Stop channel, if the stop channel stops, basically the application is, stop, is stopping, then the stop channel is closed, then uh, all these controllers get the stop signal so they have the chance to stop gracefully. I'm creating two other channels. Signals is just binding some interrupts. And done is basically Yeah, if you are receiving a signal, then everything is done. And then I can I, I, actually, this signal can exit. Long story short, this allows us to do controllers on go, go routines. And we already got a, a ping from the controller. So we are getting an update where OB is nil. That's interesting. And I have no idea what's this. Mm -hmm. Again, I have to use V1. We are stopping just in a few minutes as soon as this is uh, running properly. And this is running and I could stop it at any point. All right, so 
we are looking at Git repositories and the application is initialized. If I change something on the cluster, let's say I make a deliberate mistake. Not with GitOps, just with uh, regular kubectl edit. If I make a change here and accidentally make a mistake with the URL, I should get an update of this Kubernetes API change. Immediately, I got something where ob is still nil. And what is this r0? No idea. I have no idea what this code does. I know what this code does, but I don't know how to make it better. So let's just go back and uh, be nice. We don't care about uh, deployments, replica sets, pods, nothing. We care about, we care about source v1. And git repository. Which returns the object meta here, I really hope. What's wrong? Okay, object meta is empty. Hmm. Maybe this copying of code was not uh, without a problem. So there was a create event of type. Ob is nil. Hmm. So I definitely changed the fields of this one, this informer event. So that might be a, an issue or this indexer doesn't know about my type controller indexer yeah this is the probably the point where i'm going to just stop the stream but uh, let's see how the indexer gets initialized some cache All right, it's time to actually wrap up. So thank you for watching. Thank you for the ones who actually watched uh, the whole stream. All right, so we have a project where we queried the Kubernetes API and we parsed it into a type and then we failed actually to get updates streamed to us. But for the next stream, I'm going to make this uh, this part work and you will see the changes on GitHub. So thank you very much. Uh, this There is still a long way to go, but uh, once we have the, the basic structure set up in a couple of streams, we're going to have uh, the fun part. So uh, see you soon and until next time, thank you and take care. Goodbye. <laughs>